Happy Thursday, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. Happy, happy Thursday. Happy, it is happy, the happy. Investor Guys podcast. Uh, I'm Kevin Mills, and this sharply dressed gentleman, this is new for us, is Bill Barnett. Bill, how you doing? Good morning, sir. I'm doing uh, incredibly well, and uh, happy Thursday to you, sir. <laughs> happy Thursday. I uh, have uh, those happen from time to time. <laughs> yeah, brain farts, I call them. It happens a lot for me. The older I get, the more often it happens. So, uh, you know, we usually start off the show with, with you know, talking about everything. Uh, and then we get into a topic. But I'm going to lead into the topic in a different direction today, in a different manner today. Uh, I want to start by telling a story. Now, I love talking to people. I talk to people... I put myself into positions and scenarios where I am actually meeting new people and talking to people. And Tuesday, I met a couple from Rochester, New York. And I, those of you who, who watch the show, you've heard me mention Rochester, New York. It's one of the places where I invest. I love my Section 8 in Rochester, New York. We got into a conversation and they told me that they were just in the final processes of selling off their father's properties. Their father was an investor in Rochester who, like me, invested in Section 8. I wish I had known him because he seemed like a, a, a very interesting gentleman. They said he had been doing it for uh, 50 years, for just over 50 years. Most of his properties, they said, were already paid off or mostly paid off. He had, they said, 46 properties, and they didn't say exactly, they weren't sure exactly, but they, he said he had 80-something doors, okay? So that's in your range. 40. Yeah, that's, he's, he, yeah, he has about three properties more than I have in Rochester. Very cool. Um, 43 properties in Rochester. Now, what I wanted to talk about, I'm going to go over these numbers. We're going to talk about Rochester today, but we're also going to talk about equity and the value of equity because he's been doing this for, he, he passed away. And uh, they decided they didn't want to be real estate investors. So they literally sold his properties and they have the equity in the properties now that they're going to be able to bank. And I'll give you some rough ideas. I don't know specifics on the properties. So I'll give you rough ideas of the types of values and costs and the types of income that he would have been making in Rochester uh, based upon equity and no equity. Uh, I put together some numbers before we start, but I do want to talk before the show is over about some of the things that we can do with equity and property once we get it. We talk about, as real estate investors, we talk about equity all the time, how much equity I'm going to have in this. And, and we usually are looking at it based upon our loans and our financing, but there's so many things that we can do with equity and property. We can use it for leverage. We can use it for wealth building. We can use it for a lot of different things. And I want to talk about that at least by the final segment of the show. Now, this this is going to be interesting to you. And I'm going to share a screen really quick. Um, cool. Rochester, New York. Okay. Pay attention to these numbers. Okay. Now, the top is 100% of their their value and uh, i'm not sure there we go move our window out of the way uh if you're looking okay now if he's investing investing in rochester he's probably doing the same strategy that i am okay and i'm going to assume he's doing the same strategy that i'm so he's buying properties that have six bedrooms total okay now it's typically two different units six bedrooms uh they said he had 80 something doors so he did have a couple of single properties but just for the sake of math Let's say he had uh, two unit, six bedroom properties. His minimum per month on a six bedroom is 1,773. His maximum that he's going to get is 2,304. And when I say that he's going to get, these are the maximum voucher amounts that the right. individuals in Rochester qualify for. So his range is going to be somewhere between uh, 1978 and 2571, the exact same range that I'm in for, sorry, uh, 2304 and 1773, uh, exact same range that I am in, in Rochester. Now, I'm going to go back here to our uh, regular screen. I want you guys to get out your calculator and do some quick math, okay? And I'm going to tell you 
based upon him having equity in the property. Now he still has to pay taxes, he still has to pay insurance, he still has to pay maintenance. Uh, I'm gonna say that he probably had a property manager, but I'm sure he did some property management himself. He still has all of those expenses, okay? Now I know kind of as a rule of thumb, all right, for Rochester, if he is paying a mortgage on those properties, he's making about two thirds of that. Sorry, he's making about a third of that every single month as profit. So let's start with that first number. If he is at 1,978 per month, his profit on that, uh, I put these together here, uh, one third of that every single month is, I got it. You know what, I'm gonna give you the yearlies on that, okay? So one third of that every year is $33,360. Okay, and that is per his 80 doors per the low amount per year. If he is paid the properties off, okay, he is looking at, sorry, his 33,360 is, is per month. His yearly is $400,320. And if he's paid the properties off, it's 800,000. $640. That's with his equity in the property. Okay. Now they said that his properties were mostly paid off. So we already know that he has equity in the property. So on the low end, every single year, this gentleman was earning $800,640 on his 46 properties. Now on the high end, okay, if these were financed, you would be earning $520,320 per year we know that he had him paid off. So his high end was a million forty, six hundred and forty dollars that he was earning every single year in profit. That's after he paid his taxes, that's after he paid his insurance, after he paid his property management, his maintenance, everything else. Yeah. A million you taxes, you mean property taxes, not his property taxes, taxes, correct. Not his not his income tax. You don't want people getting okay. the wrong idea. Now, your income tax in New York is going to be kind of high. So if you're a resident of New York, as he was, he's going to be paying a high income tax on that. But his profit high end is a million forty six forty. Now, if he's been doing this for a while, he knows how to get those maximum voucher amounts. He's been doing this for over 50 years, they said. So I have no doubt he knows how to get those maximum voucher amounts. I have no doubt that most of his clients were in that high range. That means he was making a million dollars a year in profit from 46 properties on Section 8, guaranteed rent in the bank every single month. Yeah. And and it's 80 if you're not floored by that, you know, and that's in Rochester, you're not paying New York. If you're not floored yeah. by that, yeah. Yeah. And that is one of the values of having the equity in the building, okay? Now, keep in mind, and I don't know how he purchased these buildings, okay? But if he purchased them like Bill and I do, he put 20% down and his tenants are paying off his mortgage. So he did not pay those mortgages off. He had somebody else pay those mortgages off and build that equity in those properties. And we're gonna talk about equity in a minute, but we're coming up on a break and I've got some actual properties in Rochester that I want to show you that I pulled up this morning so that you guys have an idea of what we're, what we're talking about and what we're looking at. So we'll be back in just a second. My name is Kevin Mills. I have put together the absolute most comprehensive and complete real estate investor training program that I am going to stand behind it with a double year tuition back guarantee if it does not make you a millionaire. The program is called Millionaire Blueprint. In fact, we call it the Guaranteed Millionaire Blueprint. If you take this course and you follow exactly what we teach you in this course, I guarantee that you will be a real estate millionaire or I will give you double your tuition back. Read more about our guarantee, read more about this program, and even sign up for the next event at www.guaranteedmillionaireblueprint.com. That's guaranteedmillionaireblueprint.com.
11 months out of the year, Bill and I host real estate buyers events in cities like Cleveland, Ohio, where we ourselves invest and see great returns. We show investors the types of strategies we're using, the types of properties we're using. We introduce them to people here on the ground and the resources that they can use to get started right away. Day four of this event, we're actually touring properties and making offers on properties. This event was designed to put properties in your portfolio right away. High performing properties. Read more about the Real Estate Buyers event. Get registered. We'll see you at the next event, realestatebuyersevent.com. And we're back. And before the break, I told you that I was going to show you actual properties in Rochester. And these are the types of properties that, I, that I'm looking at in Rochester. And I pulled these today off of the MLS. This is actually Realtor.com, which is MLS properties. And I want, I want yeah. you guys to and see how real everybody this can do that. Absolutely. Everybody can do this. Can. And I want you to see how real these numbers are. Okay. I just showed you that first slide that we showed you is the actual numbers from the HUD office in Rochester that shows the actual numbers that you're going to get for rents in the Rochester area. Now, this property here, if you're looking at that, that's a seven bedroom, two bath. Yeah, it looks rough, it's gonna need some work. But look at that price, that's 48,500. OK, if you put another 10,000 or $15,000 into that thing to make it look perfect, then you could. OK, and you should actually. All right. You're still going to be cash flowing. You're still going to be making lots of money. Now, this is what I talk about. People say, you know what? I I, I can't find anything that meets my, my criteria. I can't find anything that uh, is in the price range that I'm looking for. That's because they're looking for something that they can lowball on. They're looking for something that they can offer less than the actual value of the property. This property right here is fifty nine thousand dollars. It's pretty much turnkey. It's ready to go. Look at this. This is six bedrooms, six bedrooms, two baths. That's two three bedroom units or one two bedroom unit and probably a four bedroom unit upstairs. Uh, because again, same types of properties I'm looking for. It has a full size attic. It's going to have another two bedrooms in the attic. It's going to have two bedrooms on the second floor. It's going to have two bedrooms on the first floor. Uh, there's going to be one bathroom on each floor. This property, uh, from when I was looking through the pictures, it's already got tenants in it. It's it's yep. ready to go. You're going to buy this thing for fifty nine thousand dollars, and you're going to maybe put some paint on it, and you're going to put tenants in it. So remember those numbers that I just told you. All right, this is exactly what I'm looking for: six bedrooms, two baths in Rochester. I've got a couple more that I'm going to show you because you guys, these aren't ones that I cherry picked. These are not ones that I like had to sift through realtor.com. If you go on realtor.com today and pull up Rochester, New York, and you look at what's for sale, you're going to find these properties and you're going to find more than these properties. Now, this one right here, those, those look like boards on the door. Those are actually doors. Um, six bedroom, two bath. Okay. Again, ready to go. This is 35,000. You could sink another 10 or 15 thousand dollars into this and yep. make it look beautiful and still be making a cash flow profit on this property again properties i pulled up really quick today uh, on realtor.com and when we talk about still making cash flow profit on it remember we're talking about minimum 40 percent a year minimum now i'm talking 50 percent plus yeah okay 50 uh, percent I mean, plus is what you're going to be making on these and that's that's with putting 20 percent down um not on your entire cash amount but but you're gonna yeah, yeah. cash it, on cash yes cash on cash this return is, yeah so look at this this is another six bedroom two bath and you can see this has a full-size attic. You can actually see the dormers. Those are called dormers for those of you who don't know. Uh, on the third floor, uh, an additional two bedrooms probably there, two bedrooms on the second floor, two bedrooms on the first floor. Uh, I believe I've got one more that I pulled off to show you guys. Uh, Great right numbers. Here. Yeah. This one right here, $72,000. How many bedrooms does this have, Bill? Can you see? This I'm, is by looking how deep it is, I'm probably going to say that's an eight bedroom. I, I, actually, it says ten bedrooms. It's a ten wow. bedroom, ten bedroom, four, four bath. 
okay? And do you remember those numbers? So this is a 10 bedroom, four bath, all right? Now, remember those numbers from the very beginning. I'm gonna put that slide back up for you guys again, okay? This is straight from New York State. It says New York State of Opportunity. Uh, this is from the HUD office in Rochester for the Rochester area. We don't even have 10 bedrooms up there, okay? But assume we're talking about two five bedrooms, okay? So we're talking about on the low end, we're talking about uh, double 15, 15 uh, sorry, 1569 or double 2039 uh, for, that, for that particular unit. So you're talking about 3000 plus per month to 4000 plus per month on a property that's costing, what was that again? Uh, $72,000, okay? You're going to cash flow more than 50% on these properties. Yeah. So um, leave that up for just a second there, Kev. So listen, when we close this property, we're probably at 75 grand. If we're doing 20% down and carrying the rest, which is what we suggest you do, so you're going to pay $15,000 down. Now, if we can rent it in the condition that it's in right now, we're paying $15,000 out of pocket. On that high end, we're getting uh, $4,000 a month, a month. So off the top of my head, I don't know what the number is going to be for uh, a $75,000 loan, a real easy way to, to think about that is is typically about one percent um is going to be your monthly payment so if you're if that's correct and you're paying 750 a month you add taxes and insurance and let's say you get to 900 dollars a month in expenses then you've got uh, you're going to be paying 400 dollars a month in management so you're going to be, let's just round it off and say it's nine fifty a month management, insurance, vacancy, everything that you need, nine fifty a month, including your mortgage. So if I'm paying nine fifty a month, then over the course of the year, I'm paying nine thousand plus eighteen hundred. So I'm paying about uh eleven five uh through the course of the year. Remember, I put down $15,000. Now I've got 11.5 coming out of my gross, but we were what Kev 20 um, on the five bedroom. We were 2000 so, and something. So to make it even easier, let's, let's round that 950 up to a thousand. Okay. Yeah. Our low end on this was $3,100 a month. Our low end rents are 3,100. Our high end is over 5,000, okay? So even if we're going with low end numbers, let's talk absolutely low end numbers. $1,000 minus our 3,100 still leaves us with $2,100 a month, a month in profit, okay? So we take that times 12, we're talking about more than $24,000, okay? And I'm sorry, how much money did we put down? We put down 17.5. That is over a hundred percent annual return on your investment. Okay. Annual, and, everybody, make sure yes. you're clicking in on that. Every single year, you're getting over a hundred percent on a property like this. And in real numbers, no pie, pie in the sky, no blue sky, no that. These are real numbers straight out of the HUD office. Boom. That's more than a hundred percent a year. That's the kind of thing that we harp on you about. So I always, I say, hey, never accept anything under 40. Kevin says never accept anything under 50. And here's an example right here, over 100. Let me, let me give you guys another just quick, actually a few more things. Let's say you sunk another $10,000 in this thing and you made it the prettiest house in the entire neighborhood. You're still at almost 100% ROI every single year on your investment that's profit okay now the other thing i really want to preach on really quick before we go into our next segment we're blessing this on the actual asking price of the property we're not saying oh okay well it's 72 five let me call and see if i can get them to go for 20 percent less or 30 percent less okay not that's not happen the strategy here I, I can actually buy this property 
for what they're asking, I can call and say, hey, you know what, uh, I'm going to do it if you're not able to do an all cash offer. But Bill, I could do an all cash offer on something like this or even find an investor who would back us to do an all cash offer on this. But just call and say, hey, I'm, I'm good, 72.5, sign me up, done deal. Let me set up my inspection and let, let's get this done. Okay. We're not, we're not splitting hairs. We're not, it's, it does not have to be difficult. Um, again, this is what we keep saying over and over and over again. You listen to other people. They want you to, to think that they've got the magic formula. They've got the magic bullet. They've got the whatever it is that's going to help you find these great properties. You can make a fortune finding properties at market value and and putting the right strategy in place with it. Uh, it's it's not rocket science. There's no magic bullet. There's no magic yep. formula really other than knowing what strategies you need to do, knowing how to do the strategies, knowing what numbers to apply and what formulas to apply, but they're not secret. We're up on a break. And on the last Take segment, time. Bill and I want to talk to you about equity and the value of equity in your portfolio. So we we'll Guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com. That's guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com. You owe it to yourself to go there and check it out. If you are ready to become a real estate investor millionaire, like million dollars profit cash flow in your pocket every single year or more, guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com. While you're there, check out the guarantee. Yeah, that's right. There is a guarantee that if you take this program and you follow what you learn in this program, you will become a millionaire. In fact, I'm going to return double your tuition back if this program doesn't make you a millionaire. Check it out. Guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com. That's guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com. Once a month, with the exception of December, Bill and I go to markets where we have experience and we host a real estate buyers event. These are markets that have great return potential for your real estate portfolio. We're going to show you the properties that we buy. We're going to show you where to buy, where not to buy, the strategies to use to make great income from these properties. We're also going to show you resources and individuals here on the ground that you can use to start building your team so that you can repeat this process over and over. The real estate buyers events are designed to put high performing properties in your portfolio right away. If you're interested in hearing more about the real estate buyers event, realestatebuyersevent.com. That's realestatebuyersevent.com. Read more about the events, check out the schedule and register. We'll see you there. Thank you. And we are back. And uh, on the final segment, we want to talk about equity in our properties. Now, Bill, I'm going to let you lead off with this because I've been kind of dominating this this show with with slides and everything else. Some of the things that we can do with equity in the property and anything that uh, you leave out, I'll, I'll fill in. Got it. So when you start looking at equity and you think about having a rent on your property, you pay 20% down. Now, in the market that we're in, uh, all across the country, the markets are just smoking hot. Uh, they may not be Florida and Texas hot, but they're hot. And so you start looking at, uh, and let's just take a, that house we were just looking at. Um, if you're in that property and you're all in that thing for 17.5 and you're making over 100% a year, then you start looking at, well, wait a minute now, I've got a property here that my tenants are paying for every single month and they're building my equity in this property. So one of the things that I can consider once I get past my immediate cash flow needs. So everything, when we look at a strategy, we typically take that strategy and say, what are my current cash flow needs? So sometimes we'll flip a property. Sometimes we'll pull a property out of a rental portfolio and sell it because we have a large cash flow need coming up. And so, but maybe it's uh, a year of college. Uh, we're like, okay, no problem. I'm going to go, I'll sell this property. I got more equity than that in it. And boom. So we base that on getting to a point where we're quickly past 
our immediate cash flow needs. So then, and here's what that's leading to. Once I get past my immediate cash flow needs, then I can look at a property like the one that we just saw and say, hey, maybe I want to refi that property and bring it down to a 15 instead of a 30 or a 20 and bring it down to 15 so that that equity builds even faster. And as I do that, I, if I'm still making 80% on my money, am I going to complain? No, I still got great cash. And look, um, one of the clients that, uh, that I, one of the students that I have, uh, one of the things that we did, he was like, what do you think I should do? And he's, he's only got like 22 doors. I said, look, where are we cash flow wise? He said, I'm, I'm good. I don't, I don't need anything. I said, well, let's look at a number based on what you're getting uh, that's profit per month. How much of that do you need? Well, he ended up with about an extra $10,000 a month that he was like, I, I don't have any kind of immediate need for this money right here every single month. So, okay, then let's do this. Let's take that money and attack one property and just start spitting it toward that one property and pay it off. And then we take the income coming in and we move it to the next property and we move it to the next property. And look, anytime that something pops up and you go, Hey, you know, I want to take the, uh, I want to take a really nice cruise with my wife and it's going to be eight, 10, $12,000. Well, fine. You just don't do that that month. And you take that money and go do the thing that you wanted to do, but you've got all of your basic needs covered. And then you're able to accelerate um, and I, this is an old Dave Ramsey theory. Now, Dave doesn't talk about this at all, but if you ever listen to Dave Ramsey, and I used to teach the financial piece at our church, one of the things that he, he talks about when he talks about credit card debt or any kind of debt is you rank them, you take the one that has is the smallest amount owed on it, and you focus everything you can above all your min monthly minimums on that one thing till it's paid off. Now, when it's paid off, whatever you were paying on that, you roll that dollar amount up to the next one and you start attacking that. And when I looked at that, I was like, you know, that's what I teach in real estate, but I teach it in this way, pulling that equity that I don't have to live on and attacking one property. And it's always going to be the cheapest property first. And the reason that you do that is because it creates great momentum for you personally. You can see it quickly. Then when you get to a point where you go, hey, I got one completely paid for. If you'll remember uh, last show, your show before that, last few shows, I talked about uh, working for Russ Whitney for one at one time. And oh, show you. the whole thing that that company was built on is by one rental property a year for 10 years. And by the time you're retired, all 10 of them are paid off. But that's that same concept, accelerate the equity. And if you're living the way you want to live and your rental properties are paying all your overhead and you're still got extra cash coming in, don't go buy Bitcoin. Don't go buy this. Don't go buy that. Pay off your properties. And then you have an opportunity. Now, I'm, I'm sure the guy in Rochester that uh, Kev was talking about earlier that it passed away. I'm sure he probably rolled over in his grave as soon as his heirs went, yeah, we're, we're going to, we're going to sell that stuff, especially if it was one uh, when they could have just stepped right into the ownership position, but they probably, Oh, it's be too much headache, blah, 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 blah. But think they, about they that. Didn't they, wanna be, they said they didn't want to be property owners. They didn't want to be yeah, investors. So they could have stepped into that deal had a huge amount of equity handed to them that they didn't have to touch, but was always there in case something catastrophic happened. But they were going to be making 800 plus a year. Now, what they're going to do, they, they won the lottery in their mind. They sold all those properties off and he had um, 46 40s. properties. Okay. So let's just say that, uh, that that was 50 grand a piece. There's a couple million bucks. Which they could have made in a few years. On profit, they swap properties. one check for a couple million bucks that they're going to get absolutely pounded on tax wise for 800 plus thousand a year, every year. And plus every year because rents go up. Yeah. And that 2 million 
would have always, it still would have been there and it would have gotten larger because markets move up over time. That's, that's a proven thing in real estate, period. We're higher today than we've ever been. Why? Over time, the real estate market continues to move up. All Always. right, so that's my, that's my sermon. All right, so equity. I want to talk about some of the things we can do with equity in the property. Now, I love that my tenants are paying down my property. They're building equity in the property. For me. Um, and I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy buying new properties with any extra money that I have versus paying down the equity because my tenants can keep paying down the equity. I'd rather keep adding more doors and adding more percentages to that, that money that I'm, that I'm putting in. Once we have a certain point, once we reach a certain point in equity, we can cash that out. So when we're about 15, 20 years into a property, we've got equity that if we need to, we can tap into. We can use it for leverage. We can keep it in the property, use it for leverage for additional property. So basically what we're doing is we're securing additional loans based upon the values of the properties that we already have. Okay, to get more funding, we can also do a refi. We can refinance that equity out of the property and we still own the property. Our tenants are still paying down our mortgages. Okay, and we have to do the numbers to make sure that we're not taking too much out. Our tenants are still paying down our mortgages. We just pulled cash out that we can go buy additional properties with that are going to be making us additional money. So think of, think of your equity literally as money in the bank because that is what it is it's money in the bank it's just in the form of the deposit is in the form of your property okay you can refinance and anybody who's owned a home knows this you can refinance at any time when you have equity and you can take out traditionally you can take out up to 80 percent of the value of the property in equity as a loan there are some places that will take out more i don't recommend that you do that no. okay um, a cushion in there but yeah, this is your bank account for when you want to buy additional properties. Yeah. This is, if you purchase properties, you know, 30, 35 years ago, like Bill and I did, a lot of those properties are already paid off if we didn't refinance them. We can now tap into those properties, pull the equity out and invest them into other properties. And we're still going to cash flow on those properties. Our cash flow may adjust a little bit, but for what we're getting additionally with those new properties, we're making more money. So think of equity literally as money that's being deposited into your bank account. If you if you need it, tap into it, buy additional properties. If you're on a roll and you're reinvesting in your portfolio the way we talked about literally in our last episode, we talked about reinvesting into your portfolio, your profits. Now, if you're on a roll and you're doing that, you really don't need to tap into your equity. But if you ever do need to tap into your equity or you ever want to tap into your equity and just power pack your investing strategy, it's there for you. It is, like I said, money in the bank, the form of deposit is literally ownership of the property. Now, one thing to consider, password. okay, what's that? We're way past break. We're, we're, yeah, this is our, we're not, we're not test break. This is our final segment. So let me go over a little bit more uh, and point out that Bill and I both have children. Okay. So we're building a legacy that part of that legacy is the equity in our portfolio. Now, this gentleman who passed away, he did the same thing. He built a legacy and you know what? He probably was rolling over in his grave because he knew the value. He knew the numbers. He knew that he had basically put together a money machine an ATM machine cranking out close to a million dollars a year for his heirs, but they yeah. chose to sell them. They still, he still left them something. He still left them more than most people traditionally leave to their children. So either way, a way you, to either way set you slice that it. Up. What's that? There's a way to set that up from a legacy standpoint. Yeah, where, he put yeah, it into he, trust he and everything else. Yeah, he could have yeah. put those into a trust and and just said, "Hey, the trust is going to be spitting you out." You know, after all the fees and and trust fees and stuff, going to be we're going to it's going to pay you seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year as a minimum, and then maybe after ten years, you have the ability to sell off uh, some of the properties so that they get used to having that income and get to a point where they don't need to sell off properties. And so by the time they say, oh, that's what I would have done probably 10 years, by the time they got there, they would be like, 
this is the goose that lays the golden egg. I'd rather keep getting eggs than cut the goose's head off. Yes. And real quick in closing, before we go, just to show you the power of this, um, you guys know what an endowment is. An endowment is money that was left to a university, to a theater, to a arts group, to anything else. Um, that is an amount of money that cannot be spent. However, the money that is made with the endowment can be spent. Yep. Many times these endowments come in the form of real estate. They're already a real estate endowment. It's, it's properties that are already owned. The university or the arts group or whatever it is gets the money that is being earned from that real estate. Many times they'll get cash. They will put that cash into real estate because real estate pays more than the interest on that endowment if they're keeping it in the bank or investing in something else. Um, a lot of times endowments come with uh, risk factors. They're not allowed to have more than a certain percentage of risk for the investments that they take, yada, 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 yada. You could essentially do the same thing for your heirs. You could put together an endowment in real estate that is going to continue to pay them uh, for the rest of their lives, you know, after you're gone. Uh, so think of that. Think of the abilities of real estate. Think of equity. Uh, think of the numbers and the actual properties that we showed you today. I, I seriously, I don't, I don't know that there's a single show that we ever do, Bill, that is not a 1,000% argument for getting your butt in gear and getting out there and investing in real estate. A couple of final things, just, just business matters. Check out Buyer's Event. Sorry, realestatebuyersevent.com, realestatebuyersevent.com. Uh, Bill and I, once a month, we go to different markets. Uh, we actually take people, lead them by the hand, show them properties. Uh, Rochester is one of them that will be on our, our radar coming soon. We've got Cleveland coming up. We've got Dallas, Bill's uh, backyard coming up soon. Uh, check that out. Uh, anything else that you wanted to mention? Oh, our 100th show is coming up one week from today. From today. One week from today. Holy we holy. are going to do something immediately after the show. We're probably going to do, excuse me, Facebook Live. So find us on Facebook yeah. Live right after the show. Uh, it'll probably be sometime around uh, 3.30 or 4 o'clock, depending upon how much over we go on that particular show. Dancing um, on a table somewhere. Show 100. Maybe I'll do it poolside or beachside or something like that. But yeah. Right after the show, oh, we will do a Facebook Live for, yeah, 15, 20 minutes. And uh, and look, if you go on, like if you're an iTunes person, a lot of the shows haven't been loaded up yet. So you may only see 50 or 60 on a particular platform. Um, we're at 100, or we will be next Thursday. We're at 98 today. Oh, my gosh, that's crazy. Uh, we're at 98 today. We will be at 100 a week from today, barring anything unforeseen, knock on the wood, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, But if you go, just know that we're loading the archive up. Uh, sometimes, uh, right now, Kevin's doing some re-edit, which is uh, very gracious of him. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, and it, that takes a Unfortunately, it takes a lot of time, not just to put it together, but literally to burn it too. So uh, I am on it. I will get it done. So, so if you see that the particular uh, carrier provider for our podcast doesn't have a hundred on it yet, you'll know uh, what's happening uh, there. So thank right. you for being with us. Thank you. And we will see you guys on Tuesday. Uh, thanks for joining us. And if you have any questions, you can always get in touch with us at contact at investorguyspodcast.com. You can also find all the shows at investorguyspodcast.com. Thanks very much. And we'll see you soon.